Okay, back with you on the Bronx Buzz. My favorite thing on this program is when one of my friends comes on the show, and uh, one of my buddies is uh, Elena Martinez. She is a folklorist and also, of course, co-founder of the Bronx Music Heritage Center. Hi, Elena. Nice to see you. How are you? Nice to see you, Gary. Always good to see you. Um, Elena, you know, because I shared it with you, I attended a, a Zoom presentation that you made. I guess it was through the Tremont Library, right? Is that what mm -hmm. it was? Mm -hmm. About the history of theaters in the Bronx. Now, you and I just uh, debated for a moment whether it's really true that there were more jazz clubs or jazz, uh, jazz houses in the Bronx uh, than there were in Manhattan way back in the hundred years ago. Um, we don't know if that's true, but there were some wonderful theaters in the Bronx. Why, why don't you just give us the, the landscape, the expanse of what that's about? Well, I would say that that um, event, that presentation was about just venues in the Bronx in general, um, music venues in the Bronx, um, and mostly Latin music. We were looking at the Latin music scene like in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. But theaters were a big part of that. Theaters were a big part of that um, landscape. And, you know, most people, you know, if you go to the Bronx, of course, there's a, you know, you could look, go down the Grand Concourse. There's a, there was a, a bunch of theaters there. Southern Boulevard itself, you go from Bruckner, follow, um, Southern Boulevard all the way up to 174th. There's a lot of theaters and you just see them dotted all over. Now, a lot of them now, you wouldn't know they were theaters. Like some of the buildings are still there, but they've been converted into other things. I think, um, uh, I forget the, the um, there's one on Southern Boulevard. There's now a laundromat, but like the shell of the building is still there. Um, and well, then a laundromat in a, in a classic old theater. That's amazing. Yeah, you know, that that's um, the, but the, the shell of the building is still there. But um, but a lot of them are, you know, you can see the facades and things still there. But the Bronx has had probably, I'm sure, all over the city as well. Um, but the Bronx definitely had a, a large landscape of theaters mm -hmm. because there were building booms and, you know, in the teens and the 30s in the Bronx. So these were the times when people started were moving up you know, north to, to settle into the Bronx. And, if, you know, there's, you know, residential buildings are built, but also people, people are, are they want things built because they're living there now and they're, people right. need stuff for recreation. Well, sure. You know, and, and, and I think from the people who owned the properties, they couldn't make a go of it. I, I'm just curious, and I didn't get to ask you during that Zoom call, but I'm just curious, is this akin to the number of movie theaters we had were, were in other words did they movie theaters double as performance houses or were they really separate concert houses and movie theaters because i know my neighborhood every neighborhood had movie theaters and of course now what do we have two in the borough we i know i know sadly first street and one on in bay plaza and that's about it but they actually they, they became them a lot of the old theaters um, and you know what, what I love about theater, the theater history to me sort of reflects the sort of like um, changing demographics of the borough. Uh, just if you did like you could do a study of just the theaters themselves and see how the borough has changed, because early on, you know, early theaters, if they were built in the 20s and 30s are going to, you know, they're live, they're live shows. They're right. going to be a lot of vaudeville type shows. So vaudeville live, live music and sometimes other entertainments like boxing, things like that. So there were like these like live, live events there. Now you get into the 40s and 50s, and there's still live events there, but there's a mix with now, um, if you're in a Spanish-speaking neighborhood, the movies, there are going to be movies there, but they're going to be usually uh, Mexican movies. Because wow. this, is the, this is the golden age of Mexican cinema. From the late 30s to the 60s is the golden age of Mexican cinema. And um, the, they're, they're putting out, they're, you know, the Hollywood of, the La of Latin America, they're putting out just tons of movies with many famous um, actors and, and musicians. And um, even the... Um, you know, people younger, I mean, my father's generation who maybe grew up um, in the Hollywood movies of Gene Autry and uh, all the singing right. cowboys, that was the same thing in, in Mexican movies. You had all these like mariachi singers who were wow. cowboy movies of the time. And they you know, were in, 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 in the BX, in the Bronx. Oh, yeah. And, you know, the wow. one the one story That's I think crazy. to me, which is most illustrative, and I, it really changed my thinking about things, was that when I was in high school, um, Linda Ronstadt came out with that album, her mariachi album, very famous mariachi okay, album. Okay, yes, I remember. Great album. And my dad played it all the time. <laughs> and I was just like, Dad, and this never thought of you as a, someone who liked mariachi. And then I learned that when he, he grew up on Simpson Street, my dad grew up on Simpson Street. When he was a young kid, they went to the movies all day. Like they, they would get like a quarter and go all day long to the, you know, go to the movies. And what would they see at the movies? They would see... Um, some Hollywood movies, yes, they probably would see some John Wayne cowboy movies, right. but they also saw Mexican movies. So, it, and the Mexican movies were full of mariachi. So, ask any Puerto Rican.
Rican of that age, ask any Puerto Rican of that, you know, who came of age in the 50s, they are going to love mariachi wow. music because all the all those theaters, local theaters in the Puerto Rican communities played did. that. Um, let's uh, show some of the pictures uh, you um, gave to us to, to show, um, just so people can get a sense of it. Uh, my buddy Anderson has them ready to go. Let's see uh, the first one. Okay, this is the Freeman Theater. The Freeman. Um, you know, I this um, is, unfortunately, this was... Um, right across from where the Bronx Music Heritage Center is now. And um, that's like our subway stop. You can see in the background there. Oh, yeah, and, right, and right. The right. shell of that building was there about 10 years ago. That shell of that building was still there. Not that the, the facade wasn't there, but the shell of it was. But then about like eight years ago, they just totally demolished it. And there's a Children's Aid Society there now. Um, but that was... You look and you look at that theater. I mean, look at you know it's, a, it's really nice looking. You know, it looks like you know the, you know again the Bronx gets this bad rap, but you look at that as a beautiful building. The inside there, I don't, I didn't give you any interior photos, but the inside was just beautiful, beautiful seats and, and a lot of these theaters, the Paradise, um, all these different well, theaters. I, I I remember the Lowe's Paradise. I mean, I had my um, high school graduation there, and of course the the beautiful roof, uh, the ceiling. You know, so if you tell me that these were almost as spectacular or as spectacular. I know exactly uh, what you're talking about. I probably should have pulled, I have pictures from the interior of the Lowe's Paradise. I should have pulled. But I think it, it's good to remind people that like they, they think of the Bronx and devastation and all the other stuff, but there were these really beautiful, majestic yep. venues, um, you know, for, for people to go to and That's, experience music and film. But, and which which really, and, and I'm preaching to the choir here, is really the foundation of, or among the foundations of this uh, culture that we, that people don't fully understand yet. That's why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. I right, what, what do we got next? I have it on my list. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I, I put this one because um, you know, this is um the the all the way to the end, um, to the right, you see that part of the building is a little bit higher. That's the Bronx Opera House. Now, yes, um, the rest of that building was also very famous because it was a Latin music venue for many years throughout the fifties and sixties under different names, the Bronx Casino, the Caravana. It was a, one of the hottest um Latin music venues for people like Charlie Palmieri and um, you know, Pacheco, um, the Charanga orchestras, all kinds of music. And um, we mentioned this is on 149th Street. 149th. I mean, by there a hundred times. And with, but you know, of course, they made the boutique hotel a few years ago. The Bronx Opera House Hotel Correct. is there now, and and they are, you know, which is nice that they're sort of building on that, building on that history, the Bronx history, and that Opera House was sort of like a second run, a second run Opera House, a second a second run sort of um. Um, house for like you know plays that were in Manhattan to come up to. So it know. wasn't only opera; it was called the Opera House. The opera house but I think they had a lot of shows, sort of like Broadway Very type shows, sort of things. All right, let's go to the next. Oh, that's the Boulevard. Now the Boulevard is one of those places that just take away that facade. I mean, I'm talking about the not the facade, the marquee. Take away the, the marquee, marquee yeah. and you can see that building on Southern Boulevard. Um, right before you hit um where the um, L comes around by Simpson Street. You walk by there. It's actually a Planet Fitness now. It's a Planet Fitness, but but they kept that whole facade, and you can see where it says Boulevard Theater on the sort of the arch. And, you know, again, one of these, you know, beautiful, beautiful, um, beautiful theaters. Um, and, again, they're, it's amazing. You know, that's not too far from the Bruckner. If you wa start walking at the Bruckner, you're going to pass the Spooner, the Art, then the then you hit the Boulevard Theater, then you hit the Star, then you hit the Freeman. I mean, you just, every few, few blocks, every few blocks, there's these amazing, amazing theaters. So there was this big boom, um, you know, of, of, of building these theaters, like, you know, in, in the early part of the 20th century. You know, I um, one thing I it's hard not to notice is the architecture. I mean, what went, it wasn't like, I hate to say what we do now is we put up, you know, square Glass buildings. Boxes, yeah, square yeah, boxes, yeah, of course. Boxes. And here they just took such care to create art, artwork, you know, to create beautiful architecture. All right, we got a couple more. Let's let's do them before we run out of time. These are just amazing. So this one, in the right in the middle of the picture, you see like a long sort of um, marquee, the Spooner Theater. The Spooner, Spooner yeah. Theater. Um, again, you know, that, that facade is still there. It's really hard to see from this photo, from the angle of this photo, but that facade is still there. Wow. It was a Dwayne Reed a few years ago. I, I forget where, what it is Where now. is that? Is that Southern Boulevard? That's just not, that's only a, a couple blocks down from the Boulevard Theater. It's right at the intersection of 163rd and Southern, right before okay. you hit the Bruckner Boulevard. Uh -huh. And um, further down from, if you go further down um, on that picture, um, you see the the marquee, but then right after that is the Hunt Point Palace, which was the largest um, the largest dance hall in the Bronx. But it was connected to this theater, the Spooner Theater, which which was built really early, I think before 1920 by the um, it was an actress. She had her own on her own troupe, Cecil Spooner, 
And um, her husband let, you know, bought the theater for her that she named it after herself. And it was Cecil Spooner with his actress. She had this theater. Um, she eventually, you know, that I don't know why they stopped. They didn't have it anymore, but it became, you know, a movie house later on. Um, uh, later. Now, as far as seating, do they have hundreds of seats? Are they seated a thousand, two thousand people? I, mean, I don't know the the number for the Spooner, but some of the other ones like Freeman and the Teatro Puerto Rico, which I think you have an image of, they have like over two thousand. Two thousand you know, people. Yeah, oh, yeah. You know, wow. it's, it's, I, 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 some of the ones I've seen numbers like sixteen hundred for some of them. You know, so they're Let, big. They're big. Let's show one more, and then I want to just make some kind of conclusion and relate it to our, our culture here in the Bronx. This so is this, Teatro Puerto I, I, Rico. I'm glad you put this one last because this is sort of my favorite because I guess it, it to me it really encapsulates the um sort of trajectory of the immigrant experience or just the changing demographics of a neighborhood. This was called um prior to 1940. This was the, called the Forum Theater, the Forum Theater, and it was built early on. It, it was one of those places that had vaudeville. You know, vaudeville for the Irish and Jewish communities, boxing, that since the Italians did boxing there. It's a theater for the communities. And who were the communities? The new immigrants who were part of the Bronx in that early part of the 20th century were Jews, Irish, Italians. That was a form of theater. After World War II, of course, you get a large influx of Puerto Ricans um, migrating from the island to New York. A lot of them start moving to, to the Bronx. And now you have a big, in that neighborhood, South Bronx there in Mont Haven, Melrose, you have right. a large Puerto Rican community so now it's not just, it's called the puerto rico theater or teatro puerto rico in spanish right. that that theater again was one of the large ones and it's also the center of of the center of um what would they call farandula the 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 sort of show business and the latin music show business of the mm -hmm. time and all the major acts from puerto rico would Played come there. there and there was a there was a circuit there was like you know um, you know, Elena, I'm, we're going to run out of time, okay. and and so I listen. I know you could go on. <laughs> I don't know what we would do without you for many reasons, but really reclaiming this culture and to me it defines what's behind all this resurgence of culture and for us to finally understand fully, you know, what the sources are of of our soul of our of who we are in in the Bronx. Real quick, last question. We're going to see the Bronx Music Hall soon, almost. Yeah, well, well, um, the Bronx, the theater isn't finished yet, but we're going to be doing a starting event in the lobby of the Bronx Music I'm Hall on April twelfth and thirteenth. And one of them is the our other our other artistic director Bobby Sinabri will have his big band there on April thirteenth. So what, you can, what a what a what a day, what a night. So um, we hope to see you all there when our, our our first show is in the new in the new space, even though it's not we, completely finished. But we we got to run. Elena Martinez, you're you're just the best folklorist, co-founder <laughs> of the Bronx Music Heritage Heritage Center. We need you. Thank you so much. Thanks, Gary. Okay, we're gonna take uh, a, a, a a goodbye. I guess it's time to say uh, we'll see you next time. The curtain don't fall and the creek don't rise. We'll be back. Thanks to Stephen Nesson too. He did a great job too. Uh, we'll see you. Goodbye.